Hey guys, Mel Jesus here, and I am with my good bud, the immortal John Hancock. How's it going, dude? Great, doing great. So, this video was your idea. Uh, you wanted to kind of talk about doing a trade. This is trade advice, right? Yeah, trade advice. I've done lots of trades over the years with many different people, many different types of personalities. Yeah. And I, I have some general advice to talk about trades. Yeah. So, I think it's first to note this is not buying a game, this is trades which is totally different. Yeah, so you guys know that I did a video a while back about kind of tips and tricks for buying games online. And and you know, that, that video mostly focused on retail, mm -hmm. eBay, things like that. And yes. while that's all valuable, uh, I think more and more people today are, are really finding that trades are the way to go to, to get those really good deals or the things maybe that you really want. Yeah, and I think it's important to know a trade should be done first off with someone that you know. I think trades with someone that you don't know, mm, it's not gonna it's not gonna end well. I think trades need to be either with a business that you do uh, common business with or frequent business with or a friend. I, I'm lucky because I have several businesses that I consider friends as well. And and it's really important to know that the number one question you need to ask before you do a trade is what are you looking for? Because okay. that is going to clarify if this trade is going to move forward or should you stop it right there. So what do you give me an example of that? So, for example, here's a here's a conquest of Camelot. Okay, and this is a, something I picked up at Goodwill for three ninety nine. Now, um, depending on who you talk to, you would either take the sticker off because because <laughs> that was going to oh, affect the trade. And so, um, if someone you know wants Conquest of Camelot, you can say, you know, I have this game, but you want to ask them, what are you looking for? Because someone might say, I'm looking for a hundred bucks or I'm looking for this. Well, if Conquest of Camelot is like a $5 game, you know that the negotiation needs to stop there because I you see. probably are not going to come to a compromise. So, so what you're really talking about there is value, yeah. right? Is that your value and then also understanding yeah. what someone else's value yep. of that is as well. Yeah, because sometimes people, um, the other thing that people get wrapped up in is the history they had with a game. Okay. Like if you see, if you're wanting to uh, trade with somebody and they're holding the game like this <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. I just uh, I love this game as I, a kid. I I played this a hundred hours. <laughs> I and, played this game while my yeah. child was being born. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then you have to stop them and say, well, you can't put a price tag on that, and I'm not going to trade for that. That is actually a really good point because yeah. again, this is something that you don't necessarily deal with eBay, obviously, no. or a retail store where yeah. it's simply business. Yeah. Where this with trades, you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Sometimes it is an emotional thing. Like yeah. like as an example here, so. He has three games here that, that we're trading with today. Um, Conquest of Camelot is a Sierra game, which I'm eh about, but he also mentioned that he has Goblins. Goblins. Now, I do have a history of this game because I loved it while I was working at Sierra. Mm -hmm. It was a game that we published. Mm -hmm. And so for this one, I was like, oh my God, do you have a copy of Goblins? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> and I know that he was really excited about this game. And what I didn't tell him is that a fan who loved both our channels, gave it to me, huh. and gave it to you. <laughs> Dude, that is so killer. Which I'm giving this to you because that needs to belong there. It would be lonely, <laughs> it would be lonely in my game room. It deserves to be wow, here. Dude. And yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, and I was a little, ha, you got me on video, I got you back. So that is a, that's a gift. But that's wow. the important thing to know that certain people are gonna get really excited about doing a trade. And if you're doing a trade with somebody and you gotta you gotta watch your emotion because if you really, oh my gosh, I love that game, the other person's gonna be, you know, licking their chops and 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 catch up on that saying, oh okay, he really wants this. So you know I can I can go after that. That's why it's important to do trades with friends typically or uh, businesses that you do uh, frequent business with because there, there's going to be a sense of trust there. Yeah, and that's that's a good point. Your reputation matters yeah. way more in a trade than it ever does just buying retail. Yeah. I mean, again, that, this seems kind of obvious, but mm -hmm. I think it's important to to, to say because uh, there's a lot of people who do trades in some of the Facebook groups that yeah. I'm a part of. Uh, yeah. Big box PC game yep. collecting being one of them. You know, um, there's not a lot of of 
a big box PC games out there and so mm -hmm. a lot of people trade online and your reputation is king you know you need to be trustworthy you need yeah. to be quick with with shipping mm -hmm. things actually you need to be trading the game in the condition that you actually say it is in, yep. and not being kind of fluffy about it yeah. or vague about it mm -hmm. and it's so important i think people kind of forget that yeah and it needs to be a yes or no people are like i don't know about this i'll tell you right now i don't deal with those people people that don't give me a quick answer yes or no or let me get back to you or let me think about it i'm not going to trade with you we either come with a trade and 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 putting a trade like you like you were talking about over several months is the biggest turnoff. And that that word of mouth goes around saying, "Oh, don't trade with that person." It does. It, it's they're People terrible. Talk. They're terrible to <laughs> trade with. And so, that's just that's just my friendly advice. Um, the other thing, you know, I talked about doing trades with businesses, which is you know trading credit or trade. You are not going to get eBay value if you trade this into a game store. They have right. a thing. They, they're in to make money, to keep the lights on. Yeah. On average, you're going to get about 30% of the value trading it to a game store. And if it's a rare game, you're going to get 50%. And that's on average. That's coming from my expertise as working at a used game store and just in general. Because if they pay more than that, it's not worth their time. They're the ones that have to take the gamble. They're the ones that are going to have to list on eBay the time of connect, you know, finding a buyer out there. Right. And a lot of the time, what people don't realize is that when you trade something into a game store, it takes months, even over a year for that to sell. And so it's, it's kind of a gamble for a game store, and it's important to know that. Some people uh, don't realize that when they, when they trade with a game store. I think it's also important to know is that certain items are better for certain people. You know, you're gonna get more right. trade value if you know someone's into it or passionate about it. Like these PC games. Yes. These PC games to me, um, one of them's Amiga, it's a double, I already had it. And I know that you're into boat racing. Like, of yeah. course I'm gonna give that to you. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and he's referring to this game called uh, Heat Wave. Uh, Actually, the part of this that was really intriguing for me is that I love uh, Accolade, which yeah. published the first, I think, test drive game. Yeah. And a bunch of really good games back in the day. And so I was like, ooh, they know racing games. This yeah. Is cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really happy that, you know, I know that he's passionate about this. It yeah. makes me want to trade it to him because it's going to find a good home. And so I'm really glad that, you know, of course, I'm just going to give it to you. So, but I mean, yeah. So let me ask you, though, is that you and I... And I know this, we, we, we get asked a lot of times, like, how much is this game worth? Yes. Right? We get those, these emails all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's tough for, for me personally because I'm not out there, you know, I, I'll get emails from people from Belgium or Italy or wherever. And I don't know, you know, because I, I, I may have bought that game five years ago, you know. And so uh, the, yeah. how, do you, how do you answer those people? So I just had to deal with this from uh, a Craigslist response. And someone was trying to sell me Beavis and Butthead on Game Gear. And he I said, I have no idea what that'd be worth. And so <laughs> he says, Oh, this is a rare game. And he sent me the Amazon listing price of $116. Jeez, I would have thought five. <laughs> I responded back with a completed eBay auction that ended under $2. Okay. And then I said, You know, that was someone that needed to sell it for a lot of money and was trying to, th or thought it was worth a lot of money. And I, I burst their bubble by saying, this is actually what people are buying this at, not what it's being listed at. Right. And so all the time, people go to Amazon and see this ridiculous listing price, or even on eBay, I buy it now for some stupid price that nobody's buying it at. Completed eBay auctions starting at a dollar is what I use. I don't do anything else. So you don't use price charting or anything Oh like no, that. no, because that's an average. And there's some manipulation that can go on there. I mean, it's it's good for some things, not good for me. And also, too, yeah. speaking of, of price charting, a lot of people don't realize this, but sometimes when you look at the details of that, it may say one sale, or you know what I mean, or two, yeah. two completed or whatever. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's not even it's not it's not enough valid information yes. because one could be a loose copy, one could be a complete copy, one could be a sealed copy. Yeah. So I'm not going to pay uh, for a loose game. What you know, and use use something that's valuing another uh, item that's sold on a complete copy. That's that's the kind of the fallacy of, of using that system. Completed eBay auctions. I can see the picture. I can see what condition it's in. Oh, it went for this, and you know it, it recently went for this. You can it shows the the, the timestamp of exactly what day it sold at. Hmm. 
all sorts of things that you can use. And that's, that's what I use. And honestly, if people uh, don't want to work with that, I respect that, but it does, but that doesn't mean I have to trade with them. Yeah, and, and often yeah. that will go, they'll list that for two months, yeah. wondering why it won't sell. Yeah. And then maybe two months later, you can come back and be like, hey, yeah. I noticed so you're still trying to sell that. Uh, maybe we can do a trade. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes having something at a ridiculous price, and then you can just plant the seed saying, well, okay, I understand that right. you want this for that. Um, if it doesn't sell, I'm willing to trade this for it, or this is what I think it's worth. I'm trading this amount for this, um, you know, and, and you know, and that that typically works. Yeah. That's being honest, you know, and and again, it goes back to your reputation. And like, yeah. you ha you can't be a jerk about it. You have to be honest and fair. And I, I try to balance that. There's times when, if I think someone's not being honest or fair, I will say I don't think that's a good deal, and that's not a good deal for me. I wish you luck. Um, and the bottom line is if you don't give repeat business, they'll get the message. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. true. Dude, all good advice. Yeah. And uh, speaking of good trades, I'm kind of interested in checking out Goblins. Or that's pretty awesome. Goblins. <laughs> all right, dude, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you just type in The Immortal, John Hancock. And I'm on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. Awesome. All right, guys, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, it's always good to talk about kind of the ins and outs of getting a, a game collection That's you right. know, on a budget. So this That's is right. a good one. All right. All right, guys, take care. For those of you that don't know, the immortal John Hancock is a bit of a living legend here in our area because he is such a massive collector and he's been doing it for so long. When the dude speaks, we listen. Uh, he just knows so much about building up a collection, the quality of a collection, and also doing it on a budget. John is not a wealthy man, and but what he is, is he is smart and he is patient. And uh, when he comes to share his knowledge, I always listen to him. He's such a cool guy. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Talk to you soon.